Alright, we've got a 820 MacBook Air. This one's been in for quite a few days now. It's been sending me a little bit up the wall. It comes up, initially starts the uh, startup sequence where, you know, it spins for a bit, stops, spins for a bit, stops. Uh, the trouble is it just keeps doing that. It won't come out of that. So I'm trying to find out what's the cause. There's prior damage here and it's had prior work, but that's... Yeah, probably not a major problem. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to find some parts here at the moment, so that's why I seem a little bit lost. Oh dear, where am I? I'm trying to find a replacement clock generator output control. I bought some just like a couple of days ago. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. Yeah. So, it's intermittent now, actually just before, after it was cold for quite a while, powered this up. Now initially when I power it up, it doesn't do anything. I get my orange light, but nothing more. So I thought, oh well. But I, I know that if I reconnect it again, within seconds of disconnecting it, it will then start the spin sequence. So it's, uh, it kind of feels like something's not connected, like maybe I don't have a required pull-up or a bootstrap something like that and what's happening is when it goes through the yeah these aren't exactly what you call brand new either but you what do you expect um, it's yeah it's like it's like in a bootstrap and what happens is when you power off sometimes you can get a uh, power discharging through areas and as a knock-on effect, you can basically, it creates a bootstrap effect, depending on the protection diodes in the device. Anyway, so i better check to see which are your pin ones there, yep. Anyway, so this is the RTC generator area. So I'm gonna replace this chip again, and I'm gonna have another look around here, see if I'm missing something obvious. This board has now gone through quite a lot of revisions. I'm going to remove that cap as well. But that cap's an important cap. But, and I'm going to remove that wire. There we go. Hey, what the hell? We've got something under there. Oh my goodness, I think I just worked out what's going on. Yep. There's a veer under there. And I think what's happened is the veer has not been connected. Now, of course, when I saw this come in, I was thinking that, um, okay, so the person has done the connection. That's great, good. I didn't think to check under the connection. Yeah, and with that via not connected, the RTC power is not going anywhere. So I'll show you what I mean. Alright, so that's this cap here. And then that's the RTC G3 hot. Now, it should have been obvious to me, but I guess because with board views, they don't show you the actual circuitry, uh, they don't show you the board traces. So you can't really make these assumptions too much. Anyway. Have a look at that cap. So what effectively we had here was this was probably all connected, but RTC G3 hot was not actually the power wasn't going anywhere. It was just sitting here doing nothing, and it was only just through bleeding or very high. It's probably a very high resistance connection. That's most likely what was going on. So this pad that's under here. There was probably a great deal of uh, oxidation and whatnot, and it just didn't have the low uh, resistance needed to be able to deliver power to everywhere else that wants this thing, which is all up over here. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, well, let's see if my theory is right. Oh, I'll be so happy if I can get this fixed. This thing's been bugging me for goodness knows how long. It's been an absolute rabbit hole. I'd say the worst thing about rabbit holes is that once you fix one, or once you've fixed it, 
you want to go for another rabbit hole because you feel like, yeah, yeah, bring it on. I can take anything on. Yeah. And uh, no. Yeah, that's... Yeah, see the nubs gone there. Yeah, so look at that. That's... God damn. Drive me up the frickin' wall all these days. No. I even changed the SMC, man. Yeah, that corrosion's gone in pretty deep. I may have to run a wire for this. I don't know what I'm running into here, that's the other trouble. It's like, is that copper the ground plane? Let's have a stab at it and see. Alright, we've got our continuity mode on. It doesn't seem to be. Alright, but what we'll do is I'll check it on the other parts. There's like a cluster of... Sorry, uh, yeah. I'm getting excited here because I'm feeling like I've, I've got this. I should have done that right from the start in all honesty, but that's my own fault. These parts here, they're all... That's all uh, the RTC G3 hot. Let's see if we can get a continuity going there. I'll turn off the extractor because I can't even hear myself. And this is where it's going to be fun. I have to first get it in the hole. Hold it there. Oh, good news. All right, so we are digging in the right copper so if we don't lose it that's going to be a little bit tricky to get out there's a lot of corrosion in there still there's moments of good copper and then it just vanishes I might see if I can simply drop a whole bunch of solder in there and Hope for the best. Otherwise, yeah, it's going to be a wire run. Uh, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm willing to give it a go. I should really learn to clean the flux away before I do these. not look promising. So I don't want to push my luck too far because if I cause that trace to get shorted on something in there then I have to dig it out. Not sure how big that veer is. It'd be nice if I knew which direction it went, but because obviously, if you know what direction it's going, you can start channeling or digging that way. Certainly don't want to dig any further.
And I don't know how good that's going to hold. Okay, 1.5. Alright. We'll give it a go, see how it behaves, and hopefully it'll be good. If we find that it... Have I just beaten it up? I think I've beaten it up. be nice to know exactly how much current is coming out of that. Right. Now I need a 1 microfarad, 6.3 volt, 201. Oh, I can just steal it from another board. The trouble is, with this particular board, I've stolen it from basically every other place. Oh, look at that, we got one. That was fortuitous. Is that such a word, fortuitous? Goodness knows I use it plenty of times. I love it when you're using words and you really don't know if you're actually using them right or if they're even words. I suppose if you use it enough times, it becomes a word. Including horrible words like vlog, or f yeah, vlog. Vlog was bad enough, and then we had bling. And then we got vlog. I mean, who the hell came up with that? Come to me, little capacitor. There you go. I'm sorely tempted to put a wire into that. Get a wire in preparation. I should really do this the other way around because being left handed that's going to Um, there we go. I'm not entirely sure about the wisdom of putting that cap back onto the top of the nub, so I think I might lay it across here once I put the chip back on. As it is, it's going to be fun. Um, I probably should have waited on that cap. I'm going to have to put this somewhere safe. 
And by safe, I mean I'm going to tack it down somewhere where I'll remember. So it may be here. Safe. And we've still got our chip here that we're going to put on. And we've still got to tin up those pads because they've basically got nothing left on them now. Alright, it's a little crazy. A few too many domes and peaks and whatnot in there. Hopefully we'll get that settled out. Uh, let's see, our pin 1 location is... Right, yeah, towards the SMC. Now the question is that the bottom towards the SMC or is that top towards the SMC, it's the bottom. So, like we have here. Most likely we're going to have to fix up that nub again, but I'm hoping at least it has a, some chance. Alignment's good enough. It's not perfect. Now we have to get back to focusing on that wire. It's jumped out of the nub. And we're going to have to turn the board around now. It's going to be difficult no matter how I do this actually. I'm genuinely thinking of getting a little bottle or something that I can keep the uh, tweezers in. Much like you see with the hairdressers and things like that when they keep their scissors in. Now the other thing is, it probably wouldn't be an ideal thing to have an isopropylene all day. Mostly because the isopropylene will tend to evaporate off. I suppose I could put a... Yeah, that's a little overkill pull. Could be worse. Any flux. Obviously we don't want it short there with the ground. Okay, that, that's looking alright. Now 
million dollar question is do I mess with it? So the first thing we can do here is test the resistance and see if we do have a proper contact between that cluster there and up here. It would be nice to have an extreme wide field microscope in these situations. I guess we just don't have that luxury today. Okay, I'm fairly sure I'm still holding on to that. 1.4, that's good. I like the sound of that. I will green goo that. And the next problem we have is what we can do about the capacitor. Uh, it's, yeah. Capacitor may upset everything. But we do need it there. Just better grab our capacitor. What I might try to do is locate the capacitor as far as I can onto the ground pad. And then that gives me the clearance to be able to see it on the nub. I'm not sure you what I mean. Because the trouble is if I put the capacitor directly over the nub, then I can't see if it's made contact or I can't work it. So if I can do this. Okay, like that. Maybe just a little more over. A little back. Okay, so that gives me just enough there that I can see what I'm doing under that knob. Fingers crossed. Ooh, that looks good. That looks good. Beautiful. Ah, oh, it's going to be so fantastic if this works. But I suppose at this point all I can do is try it. Green light always good. Pain spin, now it should drop and come back, drop, come back. One more time and hopefully this will stay steady. Come on, you can do it, you can do it. It doesn't help when you've got wire dingling on you. Ooh yeah. Yeah, let's put it into the chassis. Let's see how we go. I 
I'm excited. This is definitely one of those things where the harder you've had to work for it, the more joyous the outcome. At least within reason. This thing's going to have to go for a ultrasonic for sure. I've put so much flux over it throughout the last couple of days. Trying to find everything. I was so desperate I even looked under that shield there. Things are getting desperate when you start doing that. Should I get flux on that connector? Good. Uh, let's see. I'll get my Ubuntu drive since I don't have my SSD here. Oh, yes, I do. Test SSD. And by test SSD, I mean I use my own SSD and hope that it doesn't get blown up. So another immediate first spin. Now we're listening out for a bong. Come on. And bong coming up at any moment. Ah, no good, we got no SSD showing up. That's bad. So, it gets worse. Is this the right one? Oh no, this is my dead one. <laughs> ah. I should just throw that in the bin. I keep holding on to that on the hope that one day I'll be able to fix it. I don't know what was wrong with it. Okay, let's try that again. I didn't get a bong, but I suspect that's because my speaker connection is all mashed up. Oh, fantastic. It looks like it was just because I didn't have the right solid state in there. I suppose it was saying I don't have anything valid to boot. Come on, you can make it through. Ah, brilliant. Let's see if the touch works. Fantastic. I got keyboard, I don't know. If it, well, on off, that should do it. Brilliant, it works. Well, there you go. Got lucky after three or four days, just taking off that part that was done before, made all the difference and showed me what was really wrong. I was happy to see that my little theory was not too far off the mark either. So, alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.